Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Deathloop. The game officially launches today, so I thought it would be handy to put together a quick beginner's guide going over effectively what Deathloop is and some of the most important things you'll need to know. So if you're jumping in for the first time, this should get you started. So if you do enjoy this, if you find this helpful, a like would be super appreciated. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. But to begin with, let's start by talking about the gameplay. What exactly is Deathloop and what do you do? Well, first things first, you play primarily as a character named Colt. He is someone that is trying to escape a time loop, kind of like Groundhog Day. And in order to escape, you have to assassinate eight different people known as visionaries to break the loop. Now, the game is broken into four areas, the complex, Updarm, Cars Bay and Fristad Rock. And each of these areas can be explored at four different times of day, which opens up the gameplay to varying enemy behaviors and visionary placements. For example, some level areas and visionaries are only accessible at a particular time of day. So you learn this information and you can then apply that on subsequent runs. An early case of this is a safe that you try to access. And when you first go to it, it's already been robbed when you visit it in the evening. But if you are then armed with that knowledge, you can then go back and visit that same location in the morning and the content are there for you to take. Now because the overarching goal is to kill all the visionaries in one single run, you're essentially playing the game to slowly figure out the best way to speed run the game. You need to try and work out which targets you should go for first, if there are ways to take out multiple targets at once, etc. And it does sound like a lot of information at first, but once you get into the flow of the game, it's actually incredibly rewarding, super refreshing, and it's like a fun take on existing genres. So let's talk about death because death in Deathloop is important. It's kind of in the name. Where things get different in this game when you compare it to say Arcane's previous stuff like Dishonored is the loop system. Even though you'll be dying a lot in this game, you'll also be learning a lot on each run. That's kind of where people are making these sort of roguelike comparisons to a degree in that every single time you're going, while you do lose stuff, you also build up knowledge along the way. You learn enemy patterns, you learn the best loot locations, you learn the best times of day to strike, etc. And Colt has an ability called Reprise. It gives him extra lives on a run so that your first few deaths are not game over on that specific day. So while it does sound punishing, you do still have a little bit of wiggle room. That being said, if you die three times, a new day will start and you begin the run again. However, again, don't be afraid because death is part of the process. You lose all your loot, your weapons and your trinkets, but you keep your memories and this means you can open doors with codes. However, I did mention losing loot, but there is a way to retain items. So how do you do that? Well, this is where loot and residuum comes in. Loot drops mostly from enemies or can be found in set locations. They come in the form of weapons, character trinkets, weapon mods, and slab upgrades. The first one's pretty self-explanatory, but slabs are essentially your superpowers. Meanwhile, trinkets will tweak your personal abilities or your weapon passives. If you want to double jump, slap on a trinket. You want to be able to hit fire more effectively, slap on a trinket. Whilst death may feel like you're having to start again from the beginning, you'll unlock an ability early on, which allows you to collect residuum. Now residuum allows you to infuse your gear which means that it will persist between loops. It can be collected from randomized items in the map or assassinating visionaries, which includes Juliana. So with that being said, what you then want to do is infuse your best gear so that you can grab it at the start of each day. Remember, if you drop infused gear though, you will lose it for that run, but you'll be able to pick it up again at the start of the next day. So don't stress, that is effectively where some of the long-term progression comes in. While yes, you will lose some things, if you start investing in the items you really care about, the items that of course make you stronger, make you more efficient, then slowly those subsequent runs become easier. Now moving on from there, you of course want to focus on upgrading your slaps. Your base powers are strong in their own right, but these can be upgraded even further with slab upgrades. These are kind of like modifiers for your abilities, which will either give them more range, more power, or even entirely new properties. You can upgrade your slabs by assassinating the visionaries associated with that power multiple times. Assassinating Harriet, for example, multiple times will upgrade your Nexus slab, and assassinating Charlie will upgrade your Shift slab. So you get the idea. Find the visionary that links to your favorite power, assassinate them multiple times to upgrade that slap. It's also important to remember that upgrades need to be equipped and also infused if you want them to persist between runs. So again, infuse them, upgrade them, and keep them. Now, following on from there, you want to follow your leads. Deathloop's sort of open, funky time structure can be quite daunting, especially when you first play it. The prospect of having to kill eight visionaries in one day, when sometimes it might take you most of the day just to get one or two, it's no wonder this can feel hella daunting. But the leads help you focus your goals into bite-sized objectives. So 
don't sleep on leads. Upon returning from a run, you can view your leads, which give the player hints towards objectives or rewards. Specific leads focus on certain visionaries, and investigating them will allow the player to locate the perfect way to assassinate that target. You can select a lead on the pre-run menu, and the game will automatically show you the time of day and location required for that objective. Following leads is by far the easiest way for a player to complete the game and find the best loot in the game. And then finally, moving on to Juliana. Of course, the other aspect of the game, she is lethal. Juliana is an enemy who has the potential to spawn in your map. She can either be AI or, rather interestingly, controlled by a player. And this is where the invasion mechanic comes in. This can cause some very intense moments. When Juliana arrives, she will shut down the tunnels that you use to escape the area and will actively hunt you down. You will only be able to leave the area if you hack the antenna at a set location blocking your exit. So of course this does kind of throw a spanner in the works. However, do not be scared of her. She only has one life and you of course do have two reprises. So it is effectively three lives versus one. If you take her out, you can get her loot. You can get her trinkets, her slab. So it is worth your time. But conversely, it can also be quite nerve wracking because if you're on your final part of the run, you're about to take out the target and she's there to make things even more difficult it can also go the opposite way. So do be careful, but don't be scared. And that, my friends, is pretty much it for the time being. Those are a few things explaining the concept of Deathloop, giving you some things to work on, some things to focus on. So hopefully that has made the whole sort of prospect a little less daunting. If you guys have any more questions, again, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you want to catch more from us at Arex Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.